Hello everyone, and welcome back to Monsters of the Mind. As always, I'm your host, Mr. G. Yeah, yeah, I know what I said, but my 50 subscriber special is taking longer than I thought, and I don't want to lose your guys' attention, so I decided to make a video today. Anyway, today we're talking about a monster who got disarmed. Literally. Today we're talking about a figure from the oldest English text. That being, a Grendel. Grendel means grinder, which is probably the coolest name you can give a monster if you think about it. Anyway, he was an individual, he was malevolent, he lived somewhere in Europe, I can't be bothered to look up where the story takes place, and he comes from the earliest English text known to man, Beowulf. Grendel is described as being a humanoid, but no description is really given about him otherwise. It's, I mean, he's presumably monstrous given his, uh nature, but uh, we never really get a concrete description of what he looks like. So some things depict him as uh, all kinds of stuff. Some make him very monstrous, some just make him a big man, you know, things like that. Grendel is described as being a descendant of the Biblical Cain, who if you don't know, was said to be the first murderer. In the story of Beowulf, Grendel became annoyed with the fact that the nearby village has loud parties every night. In order to solve this issue, he slaughters a bunch of the partygoers and leaves. This goes on for a few nights, until the king decides to hire the local tough guy known as Beowulf. He hires him to take out Grendel. Grendel and Beowulf fought for a bit, but the fight ended when Grendel got his arm ripped off, causing him to bleed to death. His death ended up causing his mother to seek revenge on the hero, but she also got stabbed to death. And then years later, Beowulf fought a dragon and he died. The end. Yeah, I know this was a short segment, but this is a pretty short story and Grendel's only in a third of it. So, deal with it. I guess I can give some fun facts about the book. As I keep saying, this is one of the earliest known English texts, except that it was written in the original form of English, which is known as Old English. So, that's pretty interesting. Also, some people think that this book is actually an incomplete version because the end of the book mentions a bunch of adventures we never saw, which leads some scholars to believe that there are several chapters of this book that are missing. And believe it or not, some people think that this is actually an edited version of the original, since this book has biblical elements in it. But some scholars believe that there was actually a pre-biblical version that didn't have any biblical themes in it. So yeah, this book is kind of a mess when it comes to its lost media status. But that's kind of cool, I guess. Now here's Vincent. Don't talk to me right now. Thank you, Vincent. Now let's look at the card. I like this design here. It's definitely monstrous, but it looks distinct from the other humanoid monsters, which must have been a pretty hard thing to do. You know, funny story about this card, on the wikia page for it, I lent into the comments, and there was a guy in the comments who was t talking about how- Actually, no, I don't think I could tell this story on YouTube. Never mind, just, just forget about what I said. One thing that confuses me, though, why is he wet on the back of the card? Wh why is he wet? He's he's clearly covered in water. Wh where did this come from? What is this referencing exactly? Also, I don't know if you can see the picture very well from here, but uh, on the depiction of him getting his arm ripped off, he looks more mildly annoyed than in pain. I don't know if you can tell from here. Uh, you can look up a bigger version of the picture yourself, I guess. Yeah, 10 out of 10, I guess. This is... I cannot find any errors here. And uh, let's look at some appearances of Grendel in pop culture. Here's how Grendel was depicted in the 98, 7, I keep forgetting what it is movie. Here he, uh, I actually can't tell what they were going for here. And here's what he looked like in the 2009 film, which was made by the same people who made Mars Needs Moms in the Polar Express. Here he kind of looks like he's rotting? Okay. That's all for this episode of Monsters of the Mind. Next time we're talking about the mischievous little monsters. Bye!